to you gamesters and fellow toy hunters coming to you today with a small game haul and a bigger movie haul. Um, I had a lot of fun today. I was going out after one game that I ended up um, ordering and sending to the side and then I stopped at another GameStop and got something else and then I was really going out movie hunting today. The um, game thing was just kind of a side note. And I'm going to definitely be going back out next week to get some more movies because I have found my ideal, not necessarily movie hunting spot, but there's some really good deals at this one place that I went. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started and show uh, the games that I picked up. Now, as I said, I went to GameStop. I went to two different GameStops today. Uh, the first GameStop, I had set aside a PSP game. And most of the PSP games that you're going to get at GameStop now, since they have stopped accepting PSP stuff, they're, it's, uh, they're going to be UMD only, which doesn't bother me. I'm going to get a nice little case to put all my loose UMDs in. But I ended up picking up uh, Rengoku, The Tower of Purgatory. I've been wanting this for a little bit. It tends to go for a little bit of money, uh, oddly enough, on eBay. And I picked this up for... 99 cents, it's 89 cents with my discount. So, can't beat it with a stick, and even though it is UMD only, it was 89 cents. So, uh, the next game that I picked up was The Witch and the Hundred Knight. This did have a price drop on it. I ended up with my discount paying um, 16 and some change. So, not bad. It did come complete. And uh, it's a Miss America title. It's one I've been wanting to pick up for a little bit, and I'm looking forward to playing it. I think the reviews for it were kind of sketchy, but I'm a Miss America fan. And keeping with the Miss America theme at uh, the second GameStop that I went to, I ended up picking up another game in the Atelier series, and that is Atelier Maruru. Or Maruru. However you pronounce that. Now all I need uh, to complete the Alchemist of Arland series is Atelier Aisha, or Aisha, and uh, then I'll have completed the Alchemist of Arland series, and then I'll need uh, to get Atelier um, something in Logi. I I can't remember, but it's the one with the the two alchemists. So, but that's I. Uh, starting a completely different series. Uh, I believe it's that's the Dusk series. So I was really excited to pick that up today and uh, I will be adding Aisha to my collection fairly soon. Okay, next I'm going to show the DVDs and Blu-rays that I picked up today. Uh, the first place that I stopped at on my journeys was Best Buy and I had ordered something to pick up in the store because I didn't trust myself to try and find this because it was so cheap. Uh, generally when I go to find, try to find the cheapy cheap uh, DVDs or Blu-rays, uh, in this case it was a Blu-ray, uh, I end up not being able to find them and just like an idiot. So I'll usually have the store look for them for me and then put them on hold. So I just find it so much easier that way. But the Blu-ray that I picked up was Never Been Kissed. I have never seen this movie, and uh, I was, I don't know, I was just in a mood. I was looking up different movie trailers and different things and uh, stumbled across this one, and I vaguely remember it from my very young teenagehood, and um, saw the trailer and thought, I remembered the uh, Josie Grossy scene, so uh, I thought, I don't know, it looked cute and I've been kind of in a like comedy mood and revisiting like my teenage and tween agehood lately so uh, I thought for as cheap as this was it was like eight bucks with with tax so as cheap as this was on blu-ray I figure I might as well pick it up and um, give it a go I think I'm really gonna like it though okay when I went to that Best Buy I ended up uh, kind of browsing because I was going to pick up another movie there. Now this isn't the Blu-ray that I went to pick up, but it's one that I ended up finding and I was really happy about it because uh, I only ended up paying five bucks for it and that is Fargo. Now if you haven't seen Fargo, this is the craziest, most messed up 
movie that you are probably ever going to see. And uh, it's really good. It is the complete definition of a dark comedy. Um, like I said, it's it's just it's it's weird. But uh, I I watched it with my parents. Oh, I think year and a half to two years ago now and um i believe it was the first time they had seen it as well and there's a lot of language in it and it's very rough but we were laughing our butts off all three of us it was just so quirky and so funny so i was glad to be able to pick it up on blu-ray for five bucks and uh the last movie that i went there to pick up because they did have it on sale for 19.99 was divergent i have not seen this movie yet i've read the first book in the divergent series i'm working on the sequel i know uh insurgent that's the sequel is uh getting ready to come out i believe they just dropped the teaser trailer for it i uh haven't watched a teaser trailer or anything because i haven't finished insurgent yet so i don't want to get spoiled for anything uh, even though what got me interested in the Divergent book series was seeing the trailer for the movie. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing this. I, I put off seeing it. I didn't go to see it in the theaters uh, because after I read the book, I read the book before I went to see the movie. And uh, after I read the book, I was not happy with the person that they picked to play for. Uh, the person that they picked to play Beatrice or Triss was perfect she was just spot on but I really was not happy with who they picked to play for he did not match my mental representation so it kind of um, spoiled it for me there but uh, I've kind of gotten over that now and uh, I mean he is easy on the eyes the actor that they did pick so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the movie but I can't talk the movie adaptation of the book and see how they did. Um, the Hunger Games, I know they changed quite a few things, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it. Okay, the next place that I stopped at was Target, and I stopped at Target specifically for these first two movies that I'm going to show. The first one is Maleficent. Um, the Blu-ray copy of Maleficent was on sale for, I believe this was $19.99 as well. So, not a bad price at all. Blu-ray copies now for a lot of the movies are the ones that tend to have all the special features and the DVDs don't get anything. So, uh, I am a special features hound. I do like them. I don't necessarily have to have special features, but it is nice. Um... The Blu-ray version of Never Been Kissed had no special features, so I don't necessarily have to have them, but it is nice to have them. So I'm looking forward to seeing this. I missed it when it was in theaters. I had always meant to go see it and just did not get around to it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this and seeing what all the hype is about. Okay, the next movie that I actively went there to get was uh, How to Train Your Dragon 2. Again, I ended up missing this in theaters because I hadn't seen the first movie yet. By the time I saw the first movie and fell in love with it, How to Train Your Dragon 2 was already out of theaters. So uh, I started, I got the first movie on DVD, so of course I'm going to continue to get uh, these movies on DVD. It says it's the second movie in a trilogy so uh, I'm not sure like I said I haven't seen this one yet um, I'm not sure how this one ends but I am excited for them to finish up and do a trilogy keeping all of the uh, same voice actors and stuff that would just be so epic and so cool um, if you have not seen How to Train Your Dragon I highly recommend it it is a really really funny movie uh, they have this on sale for, I think it was $15.99. So, given that it was a brand new release, it just came out Tuesday, that was an insanely great price. So, I always try to, um, because I am a huge uh, movie hound, as well as a book hound, uh, I try to see if I can get the, I want the best bang for my buck, so I can add to my collection and add to it very easily. I don't know if that came across. If it did, that is my uh, email alert from my phone. Yes, I am a dork. Okay, um, the last movie that... <coughs> Excuse me, goodness. Uh, the last movie that I picked up was actually 
a movie that I had been looking for and uh, kind of wanting to get today, and I ended up running across it in Target, of all things, um, and that is... Clueless. This is the whatever edition. I have not seen Clueless. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm a 90s kid and did not see Clueless. But um, Clueless came out uh, back when my parents used to really monitor what my sister and I watched. And I guess they just didn't think it was good uh, movie watching fodder for us. And I was a little too young at the time to uh, really understand uh, what Clueless was all about, given that I hadn't quite hit teenagehood yet. So uh, I watched a trailer for it, and I don't know, it just, it, it made me laugh. It seemed pretty, you know, shallow and funny, so I thought, why the heck not? It was uh, five bucks, and it's the widescreen edition and all that good stuff, so... Because you have to watch at Target. I know I've said that before. And make sure they, they still are in the dark ages and are doing widescreen, full screen. Okay, I stopped at a movie stop and uh, was browsing around. And I ended up picking up a copy of The Wedding Singer while I was there. Again, I've never seen this movie. And I'm not a huge Adam Sandler fan. Um... Pretty much uh, the movies, the trailers, the movies that I see him in, I'm kind of like, eh, you know, they just seem kind of gross and whatever, but uh, I saw the trailer for The Wedding Singer and I fell out laughing. Um, my parents have seen The Wedding Singer and they're like, oh my gosh, you've got to see The Wedding Singer, what's wrong with you? So uh, I went ahead and picked it up. It was five ninety nine dollars used. I don't know why they label this as used, because this is brand new shrink-wrapped. There's not even a split in that, so I don't know why they called it used. It's brand stinking new, but I'm not going to argue, you know. Um, got a brand new copy of The Wedding Singer for five bucks, or for six bucks, really, but... um Anyway, the last place that I stopped at is kind of my little uh, movie hunting trove uh, and show hunting trove. I've found that I could get really, really good deals there, and that is a Barnes & Nobles. It's a little bit ways from my house, but they have a DVD section there or a movie section. And uh, I don't know if it, all Barnes & Nobles that have movie sections are like this or just mine, and, um, I don't know, maybe that means they're getting ready, Barnes & Noble's is getting ready to phase out their movie sections, but it's great for me. Um, pretty much everything there, from Blu-rays to DVDs, is on sale. Like, you have a massive percentage off of a lot of them. Some of them are just a straight flat rate $9.99, um, and then they'll have a bunch of them that are like 40, 50, 60% off. Um of the price that they're charging so I'm going you know I look in there and I'm like I can totally make a killing there's all kinds of movies there but I always try to um, pace myself and kind of figure out what I want to get today and what I can wait to get because it doesn't look like people go in there to browse very much so uh, definitely if you have a Barnes & Noble's by you that has a movie section go in there and and check out that section if you really like movies because um, I've gotten some really good deals there. Uh, the I only picked up two things there today, and next time I go back, I'm definitely going to get more. I had a 15% off coupon that I used for the most expensive one. But I ended up picking up a copy of Chaplin, the 15th anniversary version, and um, I was really excited when I saw this because, as you know, I believe I mentioned it in my last movie haul uh I've really been interested in Robert Downey Jr.'s movies, and my grandparents have recommended that I pick up Chaplin and watch Chaplin, and I haven't been able to find it at all, and I thought I was going to have to order it, and I ended up coming across it in that uh, Barnes & Noble's, and it was 40% off of $9.99, so I got it for super cheap. And really, really excited. I'm really looking forward to uh, watching this. He got some um, 
Oscar nominations and Golden Globe nominations for his performance in this movie, so we're really, really looking forward to seeing this. And the last thing that I picked up, now, this is something, it's, it's a series of shows. Now, this is something that I grew up with as a kid. Yes, I had a very quirky childhood. And, um, I... I love the British culture. Uh, I, I'm a huge Japanophile, and I love the Japanese culture, but I grew up with British culture and my mother watching Britcoms and, uh, you know, watching a lot of British TV and being exposed to that. I've been to London twice, um, both times before I turned 13. So I was a kid, and I grew up with this, and... Um, I know a lot of the British actors and things. Now, uh, Hugh Laurie is most famous over here now for playing in House. You know, everybody knows Hugh Laurie uh, from House. Well, this is how I first was introduced to Hugh Laurie, and that is in Jeeves and Wooster. Okay, uh, Jeeves and Wooster stars Hugh Laurie and... Uh, St really? Stephen Fry. The sticker covered it up and then my brain just went, Phew. <laughs> Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry. Um, everybody pretty much knows Stephen Fry from V for Vendetta. He played the reporter. Um, I think he's had various small roles here. They say Gosford Park on the back of here, uh, on the back of this, but this is this is where I know these two actors from originally was watching Jeeves and Wooster as a kid and it's a very comedic show um, to do with um, it's set I believe in the is it the 20s I think it's the 20s uh, that it's set in it's and it's either the late 20s or the early 30s, but I believe it's the 20s, and uh, it's all centered around uh, this young gentleman named Bertie Wooster, and he gets into just these horrible scrapes. Um, he has a lot of money, uh, but he doesn't have a lot of sense, and he has a gentleman's gentleman named Jeeves, who's played by the wonderful uh, Stephen Fry, and just... It, Jeeves has a wonderful head on his shoulders, and he is always getting Birdie out of these horrible, massive scrapes that he's getting himself into, you know, whether it's being engaged to some crazy woman or um, stealing a policeman's helmet, you know, just... <laughs> Just crazy things. If you have not seen Jeeves and Wooster, I hi I cannot recommend it enough. It is um, British humor of the nth degree, but it is just wonderful, and it's it's a part of my childhood that I just love. I love my British series, so I was so happy to be able to pick this up for. Uh, I ended up paying with my 15% off coupon, uh, getting the complete series for 20 bucks. So can't beat it with a stick. That's going to do it for my pickups today. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and, uh, thumbs up the video for really good deals and really epic, you know, movie pickups and game pickups. And, um, Definitely, if you are not already one of my lovely subscribers, do yourself a favor, click the subscribe button down below and become an inmate of the Madhouse. And uh, if you feel so inclined, please leave me a comment. I love to read them and I love to respond to them. I want to thank you guys again so much for watching. And as always, peace, love, and happy gaming and toy hunting. Bye, y'all.